Hi, welcome to Chad's Silversmithing. Uh, before we get too far into the video, if you would mind hitting the like button, that helps to get my channel promoted and I really appreciate it. Uh, I'd also love it if you'd leave a comment. I'd like to hear what you think. Um, I kind of feel like making something sort of weird today. Uh, I get in a mood like that now and again. And uh, it kind of coincides with, I just announced to my Patreon, uh, the theme for the month is uh, kinetic jewelry. So I'm going to suggest to them they all try and make a piece of jewelry that has some kind of movement in it. And I'm going to do something that I've never tried today. Uh, I'm going to have a, a ring that's designed so that it has a, a stone that's hanging from a little jump ring inside of a kind of a loop on top. We'll see how that turns out. It's going to be sort of funky, I think, but I think uh, I have a plan on how to make it happen. Before we get started, though, I need to thank some people. I wanted to thank my Patreon group. Uh, they're an amazing community over there, and it's growing. And uh, I love uh, how they share information with each other and show each other what they're working on. It's a great uh, place for people to help each other out. So thanks for being such a cool group, you guys. And also thanks for the support. I really appreciate the financial support as well. The other group is my YouTube channel. And uh, my subscribers there have recently passed 2,100, or <laughs> sorry, not 2,000, 12,100, which is amazing. So thank you for that. Thanks also for the nice contributions and the buy me a coffees and the super thanks. That kind of stuff is really helping out a lot. I have to make a silver order here pretty soon and that kind of stuff uh, makes it a little bit easier with the hot rising cost of silver right now. So thanks for that. Uh, and thank you for the really nice comments too. <laughs> okay, well let's see if we can't make this a cool ring. So this is one of my design idea books that I sketch up ideas in. And I have found in recent years that that's super useful to getting a good outcome. Almost filled this one up. This is what I'm going to do today. Oh, and I got a, my brand new one, which we just put up on the merch store recently, if you're interested. It's the same inside, but it's got this convenient conversion chart on the back. It goes from fractions of an inch to decimals to millimeters. And I have a lot of people who watch overseas, and that might be useful for them. I, I think they can get it from Fourth Wall Overseas, but I'm not 100% sure. So let me know about that. Um, but today, I was going to, I started out thinking about making a ring with something on top that had a, sort of a cage to hold it uh, and suspend a stone dangling from that. And so I started messing with making a kind of a domed shape that's a hollow inside. And I did a prototype with some copper. It's not very finished or anything. I was just kind of seeing if it was possible. And I think this is something I'm going to revisit in a future vi video for something else because I kind of like the idea in general. And I'll make some slight mods and we'll make it out of silver and maybe make it a part of a pendant or something. But uh, what we're going to do instead here, I think, I decided on doing uh, more of a, a piece made out of uh, thick square wire. So I'm going to use 12 gauge square wire. That'll be the band, but the band is going to come up and uh, meet at the center. But if you look at it from the side, it's going to split this way too and come back. I'm going to flatten it a little bit on top here, so it tapers to a thinner, uh, a thinner, a skinnier uh, shape there, and then we'll uh, connect it up there and then solder those together this way. Ultimately, we'll put a ring in here and then hang uh, a bezel set stone. Actually, it's going to be two bezel set stones back to back facing outwards so you'll be able to see a faceted stone from this side as well as the opposite side and uh, like this right here I've kind of back uh, back two bezels up and we'll put a ring on the top I've never done one of these and so it's kind of an experiment so we'll see how it goes I have high hopes for this one and I think it'll be kind of a cool piece once it's done so I think let's start by making a bezel for my little faceted stones I made one of them already just to since it saved time on the video, you don't have to watch me make two of them. But it's these little pink stones that were given to me, and I think they're tourmalines, but I'm not sure. Uh, they're very pretty, and they got a nice color. They look like the same color as pink tourmalines to me. So, but uh, let's see how big they are. Mm -hmm. About a four millimeter, so pretty, pretty small. And we're going to make a little bezel out of this. I'm going to use 3 16 inch fine silver bezel strip, which uh, equates, it's also 20, oh, it's actually 28 gauge. And I calculated 26 gauge. Uh, I'll have to figure that out. Mm -hmm. 
0.3048 millimeters roughly. 0.3048 millimeters. I think that's right. <laughs> you can check my math if I. Uh, plus, I'm using an old, worn out gauge, so hopefully it's still relatively accurate. But uh, this is that uh, bezel strip. We'll use this. So let's measure a piece for this. We're also going to create a little step in there out of a couple of pieces of 18 gauge round for the stone to sit on so uh, light will be accessible through the back. All right. It's pretty close. Like a little scratch. Cut it off. Made it a little bit bigger so I could file it a skosh. You can of course use your miter vice jig if you want to for this. I'm just gonna save myself some filing. You could buy a shorter bezel if you want. I just tend to keep the one size around, so. I'm just going to cut it off. Take about a third of it off of there. You can measure it if you want to get real precise. I'm probably going to have to file it a little bit anyway. But that should give us a pretty good, pretty good guess. All right, whenever I make a bezel, I always make it kind of angular to solder it, and then I round it out afterwards. It's not the only way to do it, but it is the way I do it. I think it's especially a good way to solder a bezel if you're um, on the beginning side. It makes it easy to uh, get your ends lined up nicely and you can tell whether you filed it straight or not. So I'm going to cut a little piece. These ones are a little bit big. Don't quite need that big of a piece. Good to have a few extras laying around. Oh, I use a hard silver sheet solder for pretty much everything. I also use a liquid flux called Mighty Flux right now. Um, so we'll dab a little flux on here. The torch I'm using is a Smith uh, Silversmith torch. It's their um, acetylene air model. Okay, so let's put a little bit of solder on there. Make sure it's touching both sides of the gap. Bezels this size don't take very long at all to solder. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to reshape this a bit. You can use a bezel mandrel or whatever floats your boat. I've been debating whether to solder both rings closed that are going to connect this here. It's going to be a ring on top of the bezels and a ring attached to the band itself. And I may use a little bit thicker stuff for this and just not solder it because getting this polished and the stone set after it's in there may be really challenging. And so I may get it all done separately and then connect them but have this ring sealed, that one not sealed, but a little bit thicker so it stays closed if I just bend it closed. So 
like I said, I'm kind of not done this before, so it'll be kind of a good trial run. If that doesn't work out for some reason, we'll have to come up with a different plan. <laughs> I think we're pretty good on cells. find a little 18 gauge round wire. Uh, like I said, I'm going to make a couple of little jump rings that fit one on top of the other right inside of there. That's within, within range. As with all things, there's lots of ways to make step bezels. This is just one of them. I think that's one of the cool things about metal smithing. Everybody comes up with a, uh, good ways to do things themselves. Sometimes you find ways you've been doing something for one way for a long time and you didn't realize that there was a better way to do it. Just because you were taught that particular way. I've had that happen a number of times. Or I was certain that I'd found the best way to do something and then I see somebody else do something. I'm like, oh, that's a much better way to do it than I've been doing it. So it happens. But that's how you grow. you're doing this, you want to make sure they're not so tight that they won't sit flat if you're doing it this way. Then you'll have problems setting your stone at the end. Yeah, I think both of those are pretty good. So I'm going to put one on top of the other one, push it down. There's both in there. Make sure the top one's sitting flat on top of the, the bottom one. The easiest way to solder something in like this is to just flux it and then set it on top of a couple of pieces of solder. And I'll just draw it right up in there. If you haven't uh, checked it out yet, I have uh, my ebook is available for download off of my merch store as well as uh, Apple Books. And if, uh, if you're interested in having kind of a guide to all of my videos from last year, that's what it is. It has links to all of the videos. It has a materials list. It has a difficulty rating. It has uh, some notes about the project, pictures, my original sketch and the live link right to the video. So now I'm just going to file this flat. So if you're interested in that, there's a link in the description. I'll also put a link right here too, up above my head. Since I'm doing you know, 150 plus videos per year, I probably will have a new ebook each year with links and information about all of the projects. Probably since we didn't think of this uh, until part way into this year, we probably will have it out earlier next year because I think we'll have it ready earlier. And thank you to all of those uh, who purchased the book already. It's really fun uh, when you can make something that people are interested in buying like that. And I hope it I hope it helps you to stimulate some ideas. So it's gonna be like that. And I think I'll go ahead and solder those two together. 
back to back like that. I think I'm going to use one of these magnesia blocks so those rings don't move at all. Just push that one down in. Line this one up well. There is likely enough solder in those bottom pieces uh, to connect the two together, but I have these, some here I can pick up with my pick if I need to. If you've never seen pick soldering, pick soldering is one of those skills that really takes you to a new level. It allows you to pick up a very precise amount of solder, uh, melt it to the end of this thing, and then heat your piece up to the soldering temperature and touch it wherever you want it to go, and it should just jump on there if you've reached the correct temperature. So it's really a game changer as far as uh, making it possible for you to put solder in places that you might have had trouble with before. I wish as a beginner I had learned that much sooner than I did because it's it's a very useful skill. I'm going to add a little bit just from the side over here. Pretty close. I think it's close enough to where I can clean it up with my rotary tool. So I'm going to do that real quick before we solder the ring on. I'll be right back. We got this little uh, double bezel now. It's going to be going like this. And I cut a little ring like this. It may be a little bit too big. Let's see. I'm going to cut it a little bit smaller. Get a a little bit tighter ring. I used 18 gauge instead of uh, 20 gauge. I was going to use 20 gauge for the one attached to this, but I want it to be durable as well. So I don't, however, want this to hang so low that it's you know almost resting on the band. I want it to kind of be free floating. Nor do I want to have a huge loop up here. I want it to be reasonable sized. So that would be. Well, and just a little bit of a flat spot there. And I think I'm going to sweat a little bit of solder onto the ring and flux that, this as well, and we'll just plop it on there. The question is whether I can get it on there straight or not, mostly. goes this way so I'm going to turn this thing a little bit that way and then I need to heat this just enough to get that solder flowing and plop it on there. Okay we have a little double bezel suitable for dangling in a piece of unusual jewelry. <laughs> okay so let's set that to the side for a bit and start thinking about this band. I kind of, I drew this up to be about an eight. And like I said, I'm gonna use 12 gauge square, which is this stuff. But I, I took a piece of thinner wire and wrapped it around here and then extended it up here a ways because I'm not sure how much I'm gonna need to make these loops like that. Um, so I'm gonna cut it long and then we'll trim it down when we're getting ready to kind of finalize the shape. This here, I may stick some 14 gauge or something in there to continue the the thing or maybe a piece of sheet. I haven't decided yet. We'll have to kind of make an arbitrary call on that one. We'll make an impulse decision. <laughs> I don't know if I said it, but 10 centimeters was about how long this came out to be. Four inches or so. For years I made things relatively two-dimensionally. And so it's hard for me to think in like a ring that's got three dimensions. I was originally thinking about doing this with sheet of some sort, but getting the, the geometry of converting from going this way to the other way seemed super hard. So we'll, uh, we'll give this a try and see how it works. First off, let's straighten these out. These are pretty good. So 
If I want these to kind of split right about the same point there, we need to kind of figure out how, how far from the center this goes up. So let's, again, we'll take a piece of wire. It's a piece of 18 I was just using. I think I go with this end and then straight across over here. That'll get us pretty close. 52 millimeters. So that means once we find the center here, we go 26 millimeters to either side. And that's where it's got to start splitting. You could do this however you want, but I, I usually line up my flat nose pliers right on the mark. I'm just going to bend it slightly that way. Same way on this side, but the opposite direction. I want a good solid seam all the way down there. It's important to make sure you got it pretty straight before you do this. We're getting a lot of questions about this little dropper bottle. One of my followers, uh, Flying Chef, sent it to me. And I really like it, so thank you again for that. She's very generous. If you're using one of those smaller torches, when you have something laid out like this, like one of those little butane torches that are handheld, it's hard to get the entire piece up with temperature, especially with thick wire like this. So you might want to get a little bit hotter torch if you're going to be stuck with a lot of mass in, in, in the rings. Like this is pretty thick wire. But if you don't have a bigger torch, as long as you go the length of it like this, the excess heat is bleeding along the length of it, so it heats more efficiently that way, versus going like this. That's kind of a trick that I learned years ago when I had a, a torch that wasn't near as hot as this one. So. you got to go all the way to the end, though, because with silver, when you're soldering it, you want the entire piece to reach the soldering temperature, which in the case of hard silver solder here is about 1450 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so now I'm going to do just a little bit of uh, cleanup filing. We got it mostly cleaned up there. So now, let's bend it around the mandrel. One of the things we're going to have to do is kind of dimple this in like that. I kind of want to, right above where that Where the crack starts. I think I want to bend these back a little bit towards me. Like that. And then same way on this other side. I may have to adjust how far down they go, but we'll see. Okay, one of the things that's going to have to happen too is these need to go spread out this way a little bit because they're eventually going to turn into loops going that way. So I'm going to bend those outwards just a tiny bit. I wonder if it would be good to solder in the, this little piece here while it's still at this shape. It's right about a size 8. I we'll just have to kind of continue the curve going in here. I think that might be a good idea. 
going to keep everything in place. So, what we really need is starting right about there, right about there. curve a piece of uh, maybe solder two of these together like this and curve it a little bit and we'll just kind of solder it in there I think that might work let's try that and see how that, how that does okay so I'm just gonna piece it in there basically and to do that let's do this doing this so that I can see that when I scratch a line in it but really I want this to look circular and fit in there just right so I guess I should make sure that this is really nice and circular too first So I can see exactly where I can cut that uh, to get that piece that fits in there pretty nicely. So let's, I'm going to use the saw to do this, try and get a nice neat uh, fit. So let's see if I can do that. So I've gotten that all filed and kind of shaped to where it fits in there pretty well. I hung it off the edge of the pad because these are spread out so it wouldn't sit flat if I laid it flat. And I wanted this to be centered pretty well in there. And I just used a little bit of broken magnesia block to kind of hold this end up. So let's flux that. Uh, I have plenty of solder over here, it looks like. Let's we'll see if we can't get that. Done. So I stopped to think of, for a minute about how I wanted to do this because I want these to flare out and be flat or a little bit flatter than they are anyway and so I had to figure out a way to get this somewhere onto a flat surface like this I was thinking if I had a splitting wedge for chopping wood I could stick it in there and do it but I think if I bend it far enough like that I could probably just use my chasing hammer and we'll see if we can't flatten that a little bit just gotta hold it kind of on the edge of your bench block. Okay, I think I'm gonna anneal this uh, to soften it back up a bit. Do a little bit of shaping with the Dremel, and then we'll come back and see if we can do some modifications to make it into loopy loop loopiness. So I got this kind of neatened up a little bit and I need to solder this side and this side together. So I think that's going to be my next step. Alright, I'm just going to give that a go and we'll see how it comes out. Let's kind of push it in there and I'm just going to pick solder on either side. Oops.
So we're going to have to clean that up with the file a little bit, but we need to get this to where this will kind of sit hanging in between there. So we need a loop that sort of maybe goes out a little bit more and curves upwards. I'm thinking it's going to have to be bigger than bigger than this though. So. so we're going to have a loop up top here too. So I think that's pretty good if I can do it like that. All right. So I think maybe cutting it right in the center here and cutting this one after we uh, get this one cut might be a good idea. I want it to be kind of like straight up and down. So I have my little ring over here. I've got this cleaned up pretty well. And what I need to do, I've, I filed it flat and then curved it a little bit so it'll match the curve of this thing. And I'm gonna try and pick solder a little bit of solder just on one side of this. So I guess we better flux it first, huh? And flux this too. solder kind of centered right in there like that. So the trick is going to be getting this up to temperature and then plopping it in there. So just the one side solders. I guess we'll find out if I have good soldering skills or not tonight. <laughs> I guess if I accidentally solder it closed I can use the saw to cut the second side. That's pretty cool. It's a ridiculous ring, but I like it. Nothing else that'll catch a lot of light. You may have to adjust the bend so it hangs a little straighter, but I think it's pretty good. Making set bezel set faceted stones. I'll put a, a video link up there. So, all right. We'll be back and I'll show you the final results. All right, so I got those little stones set in this uh, double uh, bezel. And let's see if we can hook it back over this thing. And I'll see if I can close that up. <laughs> All right. 
that's pretty cool. I like it. And that's kind of what I was shooting for here. So that's kind of fun. Kinetic. <laughs> Not a super practical ring, but kind of a fun artsy ring. So all right, well I'll take some better pictures and put them at the end. Okay, well that was the suspended stone ring. I hope you enjoyed that one. And if you did, make sure to hit the like button before you leave. And take a moment and check out some of my other videos. I have 300, and I think I said 333 when I looked last. So that's a lot of video content. And there's almost certainly something that will appeal to you, uh, whether you're a beginner somewhere in the middle or an advanced uh, silversmith, because uh, there's lots of good beginning stuff, and there's some stuff that might be fun to try for someone with some more experience. So after you check it out, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Uh, it looks like about 50% of my viewers are people who haven't subscribed yet, so I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Um, the other thing is, before you go, um, check out the video description. There's a bunch of important links down there. If you go to my merch store, uh, you can buy my ebook. There's also a direct link right to that listing on my merch store if you want to go right there and download that. That's a great way to access a whole bunch of projects all at once uh, with lots of uh, good information about them, including materials lists and difficulty ratings. Also in my merch store, you'll find all those design idea books, uh, especially that new one that has the conversion chart on the back. I think that one will be really useful. I'm excited to finally have gotten mine. There's a link to my uh, Patreon site if you want to find out more about that. And of course, there's a link to the Buy Me A Coffee site if you want to give me a little cash influx to help with materials. Uh, and if you just want to see my website, which is kind of currently under construction, we're changing it around a bit. So mm -hmm. if you've ever seen a piece of jewelry I made here, those are mostly for sale unless I've already sold it. So uh, just send me an inquiry if you're interested in it. And uh, thanks for watching. Uh, take care. Happy silversmithing.